time of their calamity, uh -huh. in the time that their iniquity had an end. See what he said? You see who got the hatred? See? People sometimes say, we got an we got a, 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 a email from somebody say, well, you know, y'all talking hate, you know, because y'all, look, we just telling the truth of, of what's going on. Right. We ain't hating nobody. Right. But see who really got the hatred? The title is Esau's hatred against Jacob. That's who got the hatred. You done took everything from a man, and then when he said, well, you know, you took my stuff, then you get mad and say he hated. Right. That seemed like some real reverse psychology. <laughs> but look, he said, because thou has had a perpetual hatred. That's what Esau has had against Jacob. And has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity. See, when Israel calamity was on them from God, Esau took advantage of it. In the time that their iniquity had an end. See, God had, was fed up with, with, with our sins. That's why I say it still come back to our front door. Esau couldn't have did nothing if we hadn't sinned. That's why I ain't mad at nobody. But I'm just going to tell the truth. He said, look, in the time that their iniquity had in, God was fed up with our iniquity. He said, I'm through with Israel. I'm getting ready to punish you. I'm sending you into slavery. But that's when Esau stepped in and took advantage and got themselves in trouble. Now, they in trouble with God. Verse 6. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord God. Now, this is the Lord God talking, right? Go ahead. I will prepare thee unto blood. See, he said, I'm going to prepare you to blood. See, that's why they done went through some of the stuff they done went through, and they got more to go through. Because they won't give in. They won't repent now. Go ahead. And blood shall pursue thee. Uh-huh. Sit thou hast not hated blood. Uh-huh. Even blood shall pursue thee. Oh, blood pursuing them now. Look, Israel cannot be back in the land since 48, because if Israel was back in the land according to the Bible, like he tell you in Jeremiah and Isaiah, it would be nothing but peace over there. But it's no peace over there. Now, they say they the Jews and back in the land, they shedding blood and what's pursuing them? Blood, blood pursuing them. That's the way it is because that is not what God is talking about. Look, when Israel truly go back after Jesus come back, it will be nothing but peace over there. Nothing but peace. He said even the animals won't fight one another and won't kill one another. That's how much peace is going to be. So you're going to tell me Israel that made it back home now and it ain't no peace nowhere? Look, somebody lying. But this is what's going on. Blood is pursuing them still. Verse 7. Thus will I make Mount Sierra most desolate. Uh -huh. And cut off from it, him that passes out of him uh -huh. that returneth. Uh -huh. And I will, find, I will fill his mountains with his slain men. Uh -huh. In thy hills and in thy valleys and in all thy rivers shall they fall that were are slain of the swore. Uh -huh. Verse 9. I will make thee perpetual desolation and thy city shall not return uh -huh. and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So he said he gonna do it but now again he doing all this to Esau. This is Esau. Why? Verse 10. Because thou hast said these two nations and these two countries shall be mine uh -huh. and we will possess it whereas the Lord was there. See now you said what two countries and what two nations are they saying is theirs and they possess it. Because Israel is just one country. But what happened, going back to the handout on the map, Israel has split into two separate identities. Right. See, and that's what they saying is there. That's why I got up here, Samaria, it's highlighted Samaria and Judea. Because one was called Israel, the ten tribes, and the other was called Judah, the two tribes. So those are the two that they speaking of. Because, see, they don't just want Jerusalem and the promised land. The southern part, they want all of it. The northern part as well. And they got it all right now. That's why we had an article. I still got it somewhere. Menachem Begum told Reagan years ago in the 70s because Reagan was trying to make them give in. And Menachem Begum was the prime minister for Edom over at that time. And Menachem Begum slammed the podium in a meeting. He said, look, we, I'm here to tell you we ain't giving up nothing. Samaria, the West Bank and Jerusalem. The West Bank and Jerusalem. He mentioned both of them. It's for us forever. That's what he said, for us and our people forever. What he mean, the West Bank? He mean these two, Samaria and Judea. It's ours forever is what he said. Well, the Lord heard them. The Lord knew they were saying it. This is what he called it back here. What he said, verse 10? Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we shall possess it, whereas the Lord was there. But the Lord chose this land and gave it to Israel, but the... But now Sierra says theirs, right? 
But the Lord think about that, 11. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord God, mm -hmm. I will even do according to thy anger and according to thy envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. See, they got some hatred against somebody, don't they? Go ahead. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. And see, he going to reveal himself to Israel. At the time he judged in Esau, he going to reveal himself to Israel again. Because he's going to bring Israel back from slavery. Go ahead, verse 12. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, uh -huh. and that I have heard all thy blasphemies, which thou hast spoken against the mountain of Israel. The Lord called it blasphemies, don't he? He said, I heard all your blasphemies against the mountains of Israel that you just spoke Against the mountains of Israel, what blasphemy? Saying what? Saying, they are laid desolate. They are given us to consume. See, that's blasphemy. Israel went into slavery. They said, now nah, it's ours to take over now. And that's what they have done. See, just like the, 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 the Europeans came and took this country from the people that was here first. They took it. Everybody know that, right? Mm -hmm. They took it from the Indians. But the Indians didn't go into slavery nowhere, did they? Nope. They didn't ship them into slavery, or they wasn't shipped into slavery first, and then the, the Europeans came. Now the Indians, they took it from them, and the Indians are still here. So though the Europeans say, well, look, this is America, we're going to still call it America, you do know it was some Native Americans here, right? Why? Because they're still here. Mm -hmm. But what happened if the Natives are gone, and you got some people come and say, this is our land, and, you know, ain't nobody to argue against that, is it? But that don't mean it's so. Just like in this case, the Lord said, I have heard your blasphemies, which you've spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying they are laid desolate. They are given us to consume. The Lord don't like that, right? Somebody then took over the land of Israel that shouldn't have, haven't it? Right. According to this, verse 13. Thus with your mouth ye have boasted against me and have multiplied your words against me. Uh -huh. I have heard them. See, but they boasting against the Lord, and the Lord got a good ear. He said, I have heard them. I heard your mouth. Talking about it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. I have heard it, the Lord said. Verse 14. Thus says the Lord God, when the whole earth rejoices, mm -hmm. I will make thee desolate. Now, is the whole earth rejoicing yet? Uh uh, it's it's war and fighting all over the whole earth, but it's gonna be a rejoicing real soon, and that's when he gonna have to pull Edom down from his high horse, cause he's saying he run this and he run that. Now nah, the Lord gonna bring him down and show him. Go ahead, verse fifteen. Why he gonna do it to him again? As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, uh -huh. so will I do unto thee. Uh -huh. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, uh -huh. and all I do may, even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. See, he said, you gonna be desolate, Mount Seir, and and all I do me, even all of it. He said he gonna bring them down. See, use the Greek word here, Adumia, which is the Greek word for Edom. But we knew it was Edom already because he called him Mount Seir. That's Edom name too, right? Mm -hmm. That's the land the Lord gave him. But that ain't good enough. He took Israel land, right? right. We seeing that. Now, just like he said again, the Lord called it blasphemy at verse 12. I'm going to read that again. Then we're going to move on to Revelation. Verse 12, he said, look, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord and that I have heard all thy blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying they are laid desolate, they are given us to consume. So God called it blasphemy. Now people would say, oh, brother, you read the Old Testament, and see, we don't care about the New Testament. Jesus don't care about no blasphemy like that and no land like that. He's just trying to save everybody. Look, well, let's go to the New Testament and see what Jesus cared about. People don't know Jesus. Revelation 2. Revelation 2. See, Jesus cared about this very fact. That's why we're reading about it all over his Bible. Revelation 2 and verse 9. People don't know what's important to Jesus. He, he going to tell you about the same blasphemy. Because the people that took the land, obviously they're going to say they the people of the land, right? That only stands the reason. You done took the land. Other people going into this captivity, you're going to take the land. You're going to say, well, I'm the, I'm the original owner of the land. 2 and 9, Revelation 2 and 9. It's Jesus talking in red. Go ahead. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, uh -huh. but thou art rich. Now he's talking to one group of people, the real Israel who is in slavery, who've been in slavery all over the Bible. We've been seeing it. 
led away on slave ships. We saw that he said you were sold basically on auction blocks. Sold a girl for wine and a boy, a, a boy for wine and a girl for a prostitute, one of them. <laughs> sold them that way. We saw that. And got removed far from their border. So he said, I know your worst, your tribulation, your poverty, but you rich, really. He talking spiritual richness. Because you, you, physically you in tribulation and poverty. But now the, 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 the thing we dealing with is Esau. What he say about them? Go ahead. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. See, now that's real clear, isn't it? This is no spiritual Jew, somebody spiritually saying they're Jew. Now, we're talking somebody trying to take somebody's physical nationality. Now, we saw who was doing that throughout the, all the scriptures we done read, right? Mm -hmm. It was Esau jumping in Jacob's place, wasn't it? Yep. Jacob went into slavery. Esau jumped in and hated it. We just read in Ezekiel where he said, I have heard your blasphemy saying the land is desolate. It's ours, right? But not only did he say the land is desolate as ours, Jesus said here, I know your blas it's blasphemy again, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Same type of thing, it's blasphemy, because you lied. He said, I know your, the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of say. See, that's why people say we hate. But no, you need to say Jesus hate, because we just reading it, right? This is in the Bible. Say John hate, the revelator. That's what they want to call John, the revelator. <laughs> Look, we are only doing what? We reading the Bible, right? right? See, people don't want you to tell the truth, though. They want you to keep with the lie. Look, we're going to read it right out the Bible. Read it again, 2 and 9. I know thy works mm -hmm. and tribulation and poverty. See, that's talking to the Israel. He said, I know your works, tribulation and poverty. But what? But thou art rich. Now he knows something else though. He don't just know that what? And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews uh -huh. and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. See, somebody had to be doing this. This got to fit somebody, right? It must mean something. We read it in the Holy Bible. Jesus say it's blasphemy them that say they are Jews and are not, are the synagogue of Satan. So this, this is right in line where we read in Ezekiel how they took the land blasphemy when Israel went into slavery. Right in line with Obadiah, he said they laid hand on their substance. Made sure when Israel went into captivity, get them all. There's some over there, get them too. And God said you shouldn't have did it. Don't, don't sound like Jesus like it either, do it? No, sir. Let's see if he said more about it. 3-9, Revelation 3-9. And we're going to wrap it up. Revelation 3, 9. See, again, you can say somebody hate, but I'm just reading the Bible. I ain't got no hatred for nobody. But I'm going to tell you who do got some hatred for this deceit that they went on. The Lord himself got some hatred. Matter of fact, he said in Malachi 1, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. See, he's the one you got to worry about hating. He's the one because he know how to address hate. I'm just going to I'm just going to tell you about what the Bible's saying. Revelation three and nine. Go ahead. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Oh, he said it again. This must mean something to Jesus, right? People say, oh, Jesus don't care about you talking about the Jews and who the Jews. We don't need to worry about that. But you lying on Jesus. You should be careful with that. Jesus said, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews. People say, oh, he called us synagogue. Nope, Jesus did. <laughs> I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. What are you going to make them do? Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. And to know that I have loved thee. Oh, that's the real ones, right? He said, see, that's why brothers go crazy be talking about bow down, kiss my feet. Look, you got you to wait. Jesus said he going to do that. And for, you to, for him to make somebody bow down to your feet, you're going to have to bend and done what you're supposed to do. Amen. You ain't going to be walking around with no arrogant attitude talking about bow down and kiss my feet. Look, he might end up putting you in hell for that. So you should be careful. But now still, he's telling you, 
He said, I will make them come and worship before your feet. Who's going to come worship before your feet? The ones that's lying, right? Saying they Jews and they're not. Jesus is indeed concerned with this, isn't he? 